Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, so, pretty much immediately after I uploaded that last uh, podcast, we had a, a, a trailer drop for Prime 4. Yep. Which was completely out of nowhere, it felt like. Um, so, yeah, I guess we could talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, we finally got a proper trailer for Prime more than just the logo. Um, and um, it looks to be very much in style with Metro Corruption, both yep. a good and a bad thing. Um, both Tim and I agreed that if Prime 4 would be not quite up to standards, then the most likely situation would be that it's still as good as Corruption. Still a damn good game. So the trailer seems to confirm at least as much. So, yes. I personally think I see uh, signs of great potential, actually, but those are subtle, so we'll get to those later. First impression is pretty much I need another Metro Prime Corruption, man. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I just I just disconnected my internet. Um, I still hear you. Yeah. Or my, my VPN, sorry. So that hopefully oh, okay. hopefully your audio comes through better. Um uh, <laughs> I should have prepared something. I <laughs> have <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I mean we were waiting for seven years for this, and it's kind of surreal that here after so much speculation and looking to the past to grab some kind of information and to think of what a prime fear could be, we now have a very specific vision of what prime fear actually is going to be. Prime what? Prime four. I said prime fear. Fear is just the German word for four. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Metroid prime fear. Cool. Uh yeah, it's very it's very much a concrete uh, now. It's not it's not just yes. this wishy washy number four <laughs> from twenty seventeen. I think one thing we can immediately agree upon is that visually it looks quite impressive. Indeed. It it it's got the same like level of detail that you would see in, in the prime remake. Um, yeah, this makes me want a Prime 2 and 3 remaster even more, because then we would have all four games in the same kind of visual fidelity. Yeah. I will say, I did notice, it felt a little sparse in terms of, like, particles or just effects or, or decorations, I guess, um, in, inside of the, uh, the pirate base or wherever Samus was in that first part of the trailer. I think that's just that's because actually... that's just because it's an early well, maybe not as early anymore, but <laughs> this, it, I'm I'm willing to to forgive it. Yes, uh, some signs that this early footage will probably be, you know, uh, be more polished with final release. There were a couple of weird um level of detail related pop-ins that are pretty easy to fix actually, but they probably weren't a priority for this trailer, so yeah. if you look closely, there's some weird stuff that Retro probably will fix. Um, that's actually a Federation research station uh, attacked by pirates, and that's why I kind of feel like going into the story, and it probably sounds weird, me saying I want to go into the story when we have so little information. How did you um, but there's how did you deduce that it's a Federation research station? Oh, it literally says so in the opening. Oh, I am I stupid? Little, uh, okay, I'm probably stupid. <laughs> it's just a splash screen. It says uh, the year, Cosmic Year 20X9, and yeah. then it says Galactic Federation Research. Okay. Disregard me. I've watched the I've watched the trailer twice and I still didn't get that. <laughs> it's just you know, it's not even in game graphics. I wouldn't be surprised if the text doesn't in game. If it's if yeah. that's just a trailer thing, you know. Um I will say so far, 
no no red flags that are really all that major. Um, just a few things where it's like I would have done it a little bit differently. Like some some of the animations with Samus feel a little too fast from what I remember from the Prime games. A little little too weightless. Um, um, yeah, but that could also be beneficial to some of the gameplay because I don't think Samus has evolved into her ball form smoother in any of the Prime games. It's uh, it's so quick, spontaneous. Um, she could be yeah, a bad thing, but I kind of like it. It's very fluid. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think I had a problem with how she morphed in, into a ball in that trailer, but... Uh, it's just like the the first few seconds of animation of her like landing off off of uh the ship jumping onto the planet. Yeah, her suit was also altered to make her a bit slimmer and more agile. Mm. It really seems like Retro wanted to have the old design, but tweak it so that a an actual woman could fit inside, and b you don't get as much clipping during animations. There's a lot of parts on the suit that are just cut up, that are just taken off, um, several edges taken off, and uh, any anywhere where there's a joint, you have much larger open spaces now, so the actual yeah. armor plates can move without touching. Okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm down with that. And then we we have um, uh, the reappearance of of Silex with some Metroids in tow, which is of course, you know, the story continued from Federation Force. He mm -hmm. a Metroid in that game from from the Federation even, and it seems that Silex did was what nobody else was able to do, which is to tame Metroid. Which is interesting, because that certainly would make him threat, and it would make Metroids a threat again, and not just it would make yeah praying animals. You know, they are actually um, commanded to attack. Somehow he managed, yeah, despite you know the years of pirates attempting to um, tame and use Metroids and just always just having to keep them locked in cages and only releasing them basically as like a, uh, almost like a bomb just because, you know, they'll just kill anything in the room. Yeah. You just unleash them and get the fuck out and they deal with the enemy. And afterwards the area is no longer enter the area without being swallowed by Metroids, but at least the enemy is down, you know? Yeah. And I guess that's what you see in um, the Valhalla in Prime 3. Yes, a very impressive example, and one of the moodiest places in all of Metroid, I would say. Yeah. And I guess by extension, not by extension, just in addition, um, Prime 2, there was certain areas with, with the dark Metroids um, mm -hmm. where they were the only thing in the room. Uh, or feeding off dead space pirates. Yeah. Bringing the corpses around. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what some people noticed is that the Metroids in this trailer only have one nuclei within their little bulb of a head. They do? They do. That could just be another redesign. We all know at Retro Studios just love iterating on their visual designs. Like, the pirates look different and they look different from in game every to single game. prime game. Yeah, true. Yeah, even in Federation Force, they have a unique design. Hmm. But some people are saying this may be a hint. In Super Metroid, there are these enemies called Octroids. Oh. They look like Metroids, but only one nuclei. Because, they think the yeah. Law the law states these were cloned Metroids, but the pirates did not figure out how to do them right, so they are super weak and basically useless. How did the cl Because the cloning process was supposed to be like kind of a... 
What? How did that? Did you mean? Wasn't it supposed to be like a natural thing? Uh, as far as I know, Metroids uh, multiply under better radiation or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, certain. Or is that an AM two R detail? <laughs> no, no, no. That was in the old two D games. But it still seems like it's kind of hard to multiply Metroids against their own will. Like you have basically two options. They either don't multiply at all, or they take over the whole ecosystem and kill everyone, including you. Oh. <laughs> it seems to be hard to m multiply them in controlled conditions. You know? But still, some people are saying that these could be mock droids. That Silux stole a Metroid, pirates are trying to clone it, and the best they could are, are these mock droids. They are mock -troids. And the interesting thing is, we had a sci-fi date, a little text that also said we are at a research. And that formatting of a date has been used in Metroid, Metroid stuff before. Only once in the actual games, but like marketing material used that uh, dating mention. Okay, oh, so this is they're trying to like place a timeline. Well, the fans are not trying to place a timeline, but it's really hard because the dating convention is so inconsistent that it's partially uh, contradictory. But if oh, we yeah. do at least believe some of the information, then this game would take place, I believe, after Metroid 2 or maybe even after Super Metroid. I'm not quite sure. That's but interesting. Not I would figure it would be, you know... Prior to, yeah, prior to Metroid 2. Like all the other Prime games, but maybe this isn't the case this time around. Maybe Metroid 2 already happened. Which would be interesting. Pilots would having be... Metroids would be much more significant, because they are extinct officially by this point. Uh... It also would mean Samus is a bit of a different person. It would. She, it would mean. You know, yeah. It would mean that that we would. Uh, if if they treat Samus the same way, it would basically make Fusion feel even more out of place. Possibly. Possibly. Um, another aspect, since we are talking about timeline that's coming in here, is that many people get the feeling this game may involve time travel. And um, that would be that would be a red flag for me. I personally kind of hate time travel stories. I say while also acknowledging that Majora's Mask is one of my favorite games of all times. It's um, yeah, it's 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 not you know, time travel as a concept. It's just whenever you introduce time travel into a long-running series just because you need a gimmick, like, that's when that's when it's a red flag. Yeah, it opens up so many possible contradictions, and it could be abused by developers to retcon stuff, even though we don't want that stuff retconned. Right, it's, just it's a, a retcon tool, time, yeah. If it's just a very simple time travel story, and I'll get to my idea in a moment, then I'd be fine. Mm -hmm. The idea I have, and many other people also have, is as follows. First of all, uh, Tanabe, the director and producer, once said, years ago, I think shortly after the re release of Metal Prime 3 Corruption, that if he ever made another Prime game, that it may be about time travel, because that's a sci-fi concept Metroid didn't explore yet. And his reasoning uh... isn't too bad, you know, even though I don't like um, time travel. In general, I do like Metroid exploring more sci-fi concepts. If they can Metroidize it or something and, and make it, you know, not stupid. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Yes. So listen out now. Um, a lot of this I'm going to do now is just, let's call it fan fiction, but it is based off this trailer, so not pulling stuff out of my ass completely here. Okay. So the title of the game is called Beyond. 
Okay. It could mean something like beyond space and time. Keep in mind, every subtitle to a Prime game always hinted towards the gameplay and the setting of the game. It was never just meaningless fluff. Correct. Second, we see during the trailer that the Federation is quickly pushing away some card on which sits a unknown relict or device. And the pirates seem to be attacking to steal that device. If you look closer at it, you can also see a holographic version of that device. And it seems to be the logo. So this device is probably really important. Maybe the Federation developed or simply stumbled upon a time travel machine or some, something that would revolutionize space travel, like wormhole technology. Um, the logo looks a lot to like a black hole after all. So what I'm kind of feeling like, and as I said, this is basically fan fiction, but it's not completely baseless. I think Silex and the pirates are working together to steal that tech. Because Silex is really good at stealing Federation tech. Uh -huh. And I feel like Silex is going to use it against Samus. And that is going to cause Samus to basically get lost. I'm feeling that maybe a ship from Corruption is only going to appear in the opening. Because they're going to be lost to space and time. Trapped in an alternate mm. dimension or time zone. And your job, your aim is to go back because obviously only you can stop Silex and the pirates. Uh huh. That's a time travel story I could dig. You know, Sam is just being trapped in. It would it would fit with very the very different time. It would fit with the extra ending bit with like a primitive looking world that you're exploring. Keep in mind that behind Samus in that very shot is not a door but something that looks like a portal, which we also see in the logo. So maybe you can jump from one place to another or from one time to another. Some people also have noticed that apparently Samus's visor and the green lights on her suit are actually purple during that scene. Oh, I so also wanted to mention that that last scene that we're discussing now is a, a green flag, really, because oh, um, yeah. it, it's it's kind of just like saying, don't don't worry, it's we're going to have, you know, we're going to have the classic prime exploration. That's that's what it sounds like to me when 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 I see that. Yeah, you were really concerned when you saw the action. I didn't take much note of it because I lived through a lot of Metro Prime releases and the uh, marketing campaigns for them. Mm -hmm. And every single Metro game basically always got an action trailer because you can't sell a game on some chick in a robot suit walking through a jungle and staring at a weird plant to scan it. Yeah. And you, want a, you want a spaceship to well, crash down you can. and guns blazing. You know, you know what? Know, I, you know how I, I mentioned. You know how I mentioned that trailer for Breath of the Wild being the perfect yes. representation of how you how you market exploration. One of the best trailers, and it also has a lot of action, but it shows you that balance. It knows what it's about. So they could do that, but that's that was that plus you know recent game releases in the Metroid series showing you know. G giving me reason for concern um because you know action heavy trailer correlated to an action heavy game um without much mind paid to exploration at all um but i think that this this last like 20 seconds is a silver lining it's like um, Just getting started. Yeah, I get the feeling but I, that I, I will always just say um, we, we'll wait for more details and stuff. Like you know, um, I I never know for sure. So 
Yeah, I get I get back to you on that point, waiting for more to come. Because people notice something interesting and they're right. But first I'm gonna say that remember how most of the 2D Metroids opened with a text explaining to you what happened before the game? And the little story that was told was often very let's say spectacular, you know, it was about space pirates shooting down Federation gunships and stealing Metroids, or about the X reappearing and the Emmy chasing them and then getting lost. Yeah. And all of that was transported through text. Imagine you would make that sequence playable. And now keep in mind that every Prime get game had an opener. Oh, the yeah. The first one is the best example. So I kind of feel like we're going to start with an adrenaline rush, kind of like corruption. Mm -hmm. Fighting space pirates, defending the Federation, Silex shows up. He means huge trouble. And then something happens. Maybe we get lost in time or space or something. Maybe Silex wins the first fight and we need to fight back. And now we're lost and isolated. Yeah. And now the actual game happens. So I kind of feel I'd like... I'd be down for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like they're sacrificing a bit of the campaign in order to have you play the story instead of just reading it and then immediately starting with the Metroidvania. There's a cinematic chapter in front of it. If I would, case, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be fine with that. The the only thing, Prime Three, what one of the issues I had was like that adrenaline rush basically lasted all the way through the end of Brio. <laughs> it, it was it was a bit too long. Like even if you just count, um, where you beat Dark Samus, get defeated, and get your PD suit, you play like an hour before you get to Brian. Um, so I would be hoping that this opening is maybe just thirty minutes. I'm I realizing much more. I didn't have my pop filter on, so I've probably been popping the crap out of this microphone. <laughs> Yeah, Here. so this is if this better. is an opener, yeah, yeah welcome back, sir. <laughs> so if all of this is like 30 minutes of action to get you really pumped at the beginning and to tell you the story without you having to scroll through the text, uh, then I think that would actually be preferable uh, as long as after that you get your proper prime experience, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And to come back to another thing you said, you said we still have to wait for more because this trailer doesn't tell you all that much. I agree. Especially gameplay-wise, it basically just confirmed a lot of gameplay features to return. We saw the power beam, charge beam, missiles, scan visor, morph ball, morph ball bombs shortly, I believe, if you look closely. Yeah. And you see your ship. I mean, Nothing those, else those would be was expected. New. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Prime was the first 3D game. Echoes had this whole gimmick with two dimensions. Corruption had a new control scheme and what was much more cinematic. Red had the Emmys. This so far ha doesn't have much. Silence. So That's can't... really the main. the main point of it right now selling point is Ooh. is the fact that silex returns but nobody actually gives a crap because <laughs> they haven't played hunters i'm guessing and they i don't know anyone who's not you know in the, like like you know super fan of the series yes. isn't gonna know who the fuck that is <laughs> exactly uh, i care because i'm a super fan and i think right. this return is very cool but still, I don't know what he's about gameplay-wise. Is he gonna be like an Emmy? Does he chase you around? Is he more like a Dark Samus, your nemesis? Or is he maybe more like a Ridley? You defeat him and he just keeps coming back. Or is there a twist to him? Is he actually a good guy? Do we know him? Is he even a human? We don't know much about him or her. Um, or it. Or it. But if I think back to the Mario Odyssey trailers, the first one already looked amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And it looked like a full-fledged game, and it looked so rich and well thought out. And then, a couple of weeks or months later, the next Direct, we got another trailer. 
and it was revealed to us that the game had a whole other dimension they didn't even show in the first trailer. The, hat. the first trailer exactly didn't show your ability to possess enemies. That's a gameplay feature, a rather That's big like one. That's like core to the whole that. game, yeah. Yeah, and Nintendo does that all the time. Where they release a second trailer for one of their upcoming games, and it's like, oh, this was pretty good already, but look, you can do this as well. Same for Tears yeah. of the Kingdom. The first trailer didn't show us we can build and connect different constructs. It's well, it was just like a story, a story trailer, really. It was just kind of them going in. Uh, but the Breath of the Wild trailer also was a story trailer and showed some aspects of the gameplay, you know, like uh, slow motion and shooting arrows while it's stuck in, 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 in the air Did it show and that? the whole open gameplay. Yeah. It oh, are we talking? We're not talking about the exploration trailer. No, very first trailer, like a teaser trailer. The one, the, the one didn't... with where it was like the guardian running around, yes. and then like with the the arrow, right? Yeah, you know, back then we thought the last bit of the trailer being in slow motion was just a cinematic touch. We didn't know this was a feature in the game that you could slow down time under certain circumstances. Yeah. So I really feel like Prime 4 is going to have a feature or gimmick that they are still hiding from us. Um, apart from the fact that we may get so many new upgrades we've never seen before. Like, corruption is kind of crazy about that. The game isn't called Corruption without the reason. At the end, Samus is basically not recognizable anymore. And... Yeah. never gets a single upgrade that greatly alters her appearance step by step. I yeah. kind of feel like maybe we get that back. Like, maybe we're really going to go beyond. And I didn't actually realize that, yeah. No single upgrade just completely changed. Like, there's no, like, various suit, gravity suit. Like no, it, it also starts very simple. Early, even before you get corrupted by Dark Samus, you grapple get that beam. grapple beam upgrade, and it slightly changes the appearance of Samus's hand. It becomes more gray. Right. And that then fits with the later PED suit, and then she gets corrupted over and over again. I guess and if then you want to count the PED suit as being an upgrade. I would count it. But the point still stands, it doesn't change her appearance as drastically as, for example, a dark suit or a light suit. Right. Still a variation of the varia suit, visually. Yeah, yeah. And then you have stacking beams, so once you get, like, the plasma beam and your gun gets all red and inflamed, it stays that way. Yeah. It's always like that now. And then you get, like, the ray protection... Uh, the acid rain protection and that changes the appearance of your shoulders and of your whole body if you are in the rain because you get that shielding around you. And by the end of the game, Samus looks absolutely crazy. It's pretty neat. I think it's neat. Yep. So yeah, I feel like there's more to this than just, you know, Metro Prime 1 with nicer graphics and new upgrades. Right. I feel like they're keeping something from us. Yeah, because I hope it's not, you're probably right. Um, I hope it's not all just going to be action. If, Like I said, if it's like Corruption, then it's still going to be a great game. But it would be an even greater game if it was also a bit like Echoes and the original time. Right, it would be much more in line with what we're expecting. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. I'm also going to be interested to see how this shapes the future of Metroid. That's, that's this... yeah, That's I kind of want to talk about our attitudes towards kind of the series at this point. Um, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, the future of the that. series. So, so Prime 4 turns out to be, I don't know... Either any everything you ever want it to be, or just kind of like like you said, like Prime Three, but just with nicer graphics and uh, 
yeah. you know, continuation of the story. What what is your reaction to either of those? Um, let's let's just go with simpler option first. Let's just say it's a good game, but it's not, you know, second coming of Jesus Christ. Right. Um, I'd be a bit torn because on one hand I would feel like this is good enough. I want more of that. And on the other hand, I would think like Metroid has been somewhat trailing behind in the Metroidvania genre. So I would really hope for this entry to push itself even further. Yeah. So um, so it's not being ran circles around by like, you know, Knight, blasphemous, blasphemous Animal Well. Yeah. Like all these indie games that are just yeah, just blowing it out of the water with, with the Metroidvania design. I don't necessarily need Prime 4 or any Metroid game to be as grand as the indie. You know, the more simple style lends itself to pushing so much more content. It, I don't think yeah, we're ever going to get a Metroid game with as many bosses as Hollow Knight, but I don't think we need to. It's be. less about, like, you know, the number of, like, upgrades or number, like, amount of content, right? It's more about just kind of the philosophy and, like, the design. Yes being you know as i guess pure as it should be <laughs> all that i care this game could be as let's call it short as the original three prime games and but and i'd be absolutely fine if it's still as good as those yeah yeah i mean if if we just get another another game on along the lines of prime one that's a win yes exactly um and the other option, let's say this one is great. And the first thing I would have to say is that we won in the sense that no matter where Metroid goes now, the Metro Prime trilogy has grown by one entry without dropping in quality. That's a huge win. Yes. <laughs> just just on, on the level of, of just not wanting the series to go down the drain. <laughs> Or just the just imagine yourself it's twenty twenty eight, Metroid Prime four would be about two or three years old by that point, and you're like, I wanna play the Metroid Prime trilogy again. Oh silly me, it's not a trilogy anymore, it's four games. And they're all great. Yeah. I, w I would love sweet. to have that thought. <laughs> that would be a great thought. And that so if it turns out that way, then we already have a great success. And for the future of the series, well, from the matching just from the trailer, I feel pretty comfortable to once again say that Retro Studios have never made a bad game. So if they continue their great work, then I might check out future entries just because like Retro Studios Prime games, you know? Even if they're not strong enough to save the Metroid series as a whole. I mean, that could happen anyway. Imagine if Prime 4 is so great, it's the best Prime game we've got so far, right? Right. Metroid 6 or Dread 2 or whatever still be bad. And then maybe we get a Prime 5 and it's great again. That could happen. That's an option. And then suddenly people will have to realize that that uh, <laughs> there was there might have been a problem with uh, the design of 2D Metroid since Zero Mission. Since after Zero Mission, please. Right, right. Since after Zero yes. Mission, <laughs> not not yeah, including I mean, it. This isn't that bad of a scenario. 2D Metroid was dead for a long time, mm -hmm. and I didn't expect Prime to ever return. So if Prime returns in its full glory and 2D Metroid is back, but I don't care that much about it anymore, it's I mean, still a step up from the previous situation, right? It's it's tragic because, you know, Super Metroid is among the, one of the best of the series, right? Um, Zero Mission being an, a, a runner-up. Um, watching, you know, the, the 2D series devolve into being nothing like that and just might as well be its own IP. Um, 
just it, it's just kind of a sad thing but doesn't mean i wouldn't uh still just kind of get my fix out of prime yeah uh, i was gonna say i'm just gonna lump those old classic 2d metrics together with the prime games yeah and then just hope and wait that 2d metroid gets better in the future and if it doesn't then well i still got all the other great ones you know plus aim tour plus aim to <laughs> which is also a great game um yeah and i think um i'm, I'm never going to reach kind of the same I mean, my, my, my position is constantly evolving on, like, how I view kind of just media in general. Yes. But um, I don't think I'm ever going to reach the same position that I had for the, the Metroid series that I had, I guess, prior to making, or prior to even Dread existing. Um, like... I'm, cause, I'm over. I'm outgrowing this concept of seeing like a media franchise or like the the creators of a franchise as this savior or this like you know saint blessing me with this uh, holy you know uh, gift from above. Yes. Um, and more so just kind of appreciating the games as they are, irrespective of the, um, the author. So, like, this is kind of hand-in-hand hand with, with my evolving perspective on, uh, IP in general. Yeah, so, was, which was the topic of our last conversation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, I kind of take any good Metroid media and kind of put it in the same bucket of good Metroid media. <laughs> um, it's a possible way to handle reg this, yes. Regardless of canon, regardless of... Uh, you know, how I feel about the company making it. And uh, it, it's just kind of there as an enrichment to my life. I kind of wanted to make another Metroid video focusing on the themes of the series as done from, like, an analytical perspective. Uh, huh? A bit more thorough, a bit, a bit more clear. Because I've been watching... Um, a lot of uh, Liquid Zulu's YouTube channel, and one thing he he was showing was there's a way you can analyze themes in media by like subject and kind of what it says about the human condition, and I kind of want to do that towards Metroid because it it really is an like inspirational kind of archetype that has been built up around Samus Aran. Yes. Yeah. I talked a lot about uh, Samus Aran and Metroid as a whole with my girlfriend because she didn't know the Metroid series prior to knowing me. Mm -hmm. And she was quite impressed by the character. And even though she played only a select couple of games for the very first time, she already was able to grasp her character in universe and her importance for our reality. Which I find interesting, because there's a whole lot of Metroid fans out there which will insist that Samus didn't have a character prior to her starting monologuing during Fusion Other M, and then freaking the fuck out in... Um, in Dread. Yeah. In Dread. And I read to her some, some you know, fan theory, theory about how, how Silux could be Adam Malkovich or something. Ew. And, and that was her reaction. She was like, she's gonna, she's gonna uh, travel to Japan and just kick everyone at Nintendo in the nuts for doing that. <laughs> she was kind of well, like, that wasn't, that wasn't so, Nintendo. That was a fan theory. 
<laughs> yeah, if it turned out true, she meant. Oh, 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 if it turned out to be true. That would be yes. hilarious, yeah. Because she was kind of like, she's so sick over Nintendo portraying Samus Aaron with daddy issues. Yeah. It's so much not her. And Emotionally that's... unstable Samus is the worst Samus. Yeah. You can make her emotional. It's kind of the same it's, with, it's, like... It's uh... because it's, like, not saying the same things about just kind of humanity as the previous games are. Ooh. Uh, Samus Aran does speak to the H how human you condition. even how you overcome adversity, how you um, deal with tough situations. He imparts a sense. They're, they're sending conflicting signals. The, they, the they different entries do. in the series. Well, I'm saying Dread Fusion and and Prime are sending all different conflicting signals. Dread's like, yes. yeah, just go full rage mode and 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 triumph will will occur, right? Yes, and then so other M is um, like as long as you feel I don't know repentant or you know, as long as you understand your place. <laughs> it's really what it's saying, I, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. As long as you understand your place and play your role you know, everything will be all right. Everything will turn out well. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate with Fusion and Dread because these games are kind of close to doing it right at the start, but towards the end, it crumbles apart. Obviously, more so with Dread than with Fusion. But mm -hmm. neither of them completely pull through. That's my point. Um. Yeah. I think not so much with Fusion. It's just the whole. The whole lead up to the to the ending is is what rubs me the wrong way about fusion, just because it's like you could have had the same game without that and it would have been the same. Well, at least at the end, Samus once more does what she does best. Yeah, know, yeah. Actually, pull through. So that part is true exactly. to her character and the themes. That's yeah. why I'm saying fusion is not that bad. It's a bit. Bit inconsistent, but not without purpose. It kind of I, I, I do. I do think that the, the the monologues are are weird and like out of place. They could have been written so much better as well. But I still see the point, and I kind of appreciate the flow of the story. There's so much escalation on the spaceship falling apart, on these mission mission uh, discussions, like. Um, okay, what went wrong this time? What can we do about it? I think that kind of works. It kind yeah. of pulls you through the experience and the adventure. You just click on your Game Boy Advance because you want to play five minutes of Fusion. And then a couple hours later, you're at the end and you notice you completely forgot the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's like a bag of potato chips, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. You, like you try to eat one chip. You try to play one section of the game, and it just you just end up going. Just one more sector. Just yeah. one more SAX fight. I can do this. <laughs> Although I guess for me, it kind of gives me more excuses to quit instead of uh, keeping me hooked longer. I mean, that was probably part of the intended design, right? Having so many save points and all right. this redundant information. You could just stop at any time, go to your job, and then eight hours later, you sit in the bus again, start up the GBA, and within seconds, you know what you were doing and where you need to go again. Yeah. But, you know, I feel that kind of design is redundant nowadays, where every system has a great uh, sleep remote, function. Mode. Yeah. Like, if Prime 4 is the biggest and most sprawling Prime game ever... I'm still not going to have any issues playing it on the go because I just tap the little power button I and kind it's going to wait for me. Based on the 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 scope of that one room we saw, it seems like it will be about the scope of Prime 2. That would be a good scope for a Prime game. Like I said, I don't necessarily need it to be bigger. I want the quality to be upheld. You know? Right. Yeah, we don't need it to be, you know, GTA open world type thing. No, no. If it does turn out bigger while upholding the quality, great. That would be Amazing. impressive. <laughs> but if it doesn't, I'm fine. 
kind of like you know tropical freeze had less levels and worlds than donkey kong country returns and people kind of kind of were angry about that do you ever get the, the feeling levels, uh, oh sorry so much the levels in tropical freeze are so much better and longer than in returns that you know be happy what you got it's so much better do you not ever to get hate against returns. sorry I, i'm i'm not <laughs> trying to find a good point to interject <laughs> yes yes uh do you ever get the feeling that that retro is kind of like nintendo's own version of pixar yes absolutely it's like the only thing that doesn't quite fit is that Pixar got successful when Disney was kind of struggling creatively. That's not really true with Retro. They got big during the GameCube era, and I think the GameCube era of Nintendo was a beat. It was it was less successful than the Wii and the Wii and the not the Wii U but the um the Switch. I'm not right? talking financially. I'm not talking financially. Just creatively critically, okay. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, creatively i think gamecube was like them at their best Pikmin, luigi's mansion sunshine wind waker fc x there's so much great stuff yeah. there you know so that's a difference apparently even feel... eternal darkness was first party uh it was at the time i think silicon knights was owned by nintendo or something or at least or the contracted by them or something yeah yeah completely funded by nintendo or something and then that turned into that awful metal gear solid uh, remake um, oh really yeah don't talk about that that's a podcast on its own honestly it's so okay, bad okay. <laughs> all right then twin snakes Yes, Twin Snakes. Uh, if you ever you do you, you haven't played much of Metal Gear, right? No, I haven't played any of it. If you ever want to check out the series, don't make the mistake Twin Snakes could, you know, stand in place for Metal Gear Solid. That's no. No, I play the PS One version, right? <laughs> yes, play that. Um, okay, but back to Retro Studios, they do kind of feel like that studio that had a lot of creative push and great ambition but kind of fumbled in execution and then a bigger studio picked them up and gave them the resources to do what they do best and then there was a bit of conflict because of course the bigger studio wanted financial returns and then retro studios and pixar just blew everyone away with their first work and the big company basically needed to Trust them from them uh, that point out, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I'm just, I'm just hoping we don't see the same degradation with retro that we did with Pixar, where it's like you're not, you're not hitting on all cylinders with these latest releases, and then it just goes off the cliff into like. I don't know, whatever territory they're in now, where it's like nobody even wants to watch their new movies. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate. Uh, uh, Pixar was so great. Um, let's hope that Retro Studios keeps producing great games for many years, whether it's Metroid or anything else. Um, right, right. Whatever they put out, I'm going to be interested. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I would the... definitely keep oh. an eye on them. <laughs> yes. Judging from the trailer, um, Prime 4 looks at least pretty good. Um, yeah. Not like, you know, recent Pixar stuff. It does no, not no, look like No that. major red flags, n none at all. No, it's still a very short and, you know, it's, it's basically what we should have gotten seven years ago. It's the first look at Metroid Prime 4. Right. It took this long for them to even, I guess, have this much to show. I don't know. Yeah, regarding its technicalities, it's quite impressive. I really feel like they're retro. It's, um, yeah, there are parts of it, if they had a higher image resolution and some aliasing, it would kind of feel like contemporary console or PC, really, you know? That's what it feels like, yeah. And that's kind of great because Retro Studios is great at visual design, atmosphere, and immersion. And all of these aspects are going to benefit from such a high quality 
production and such. Absolutely. As a I mean, just play Prime One remake, like. <laughs> yeah, that's like uh, a very great. Um, Not remake. Example for that. Remaster. Remaster. Yeah. Um, My mind blowing visuals. Yeah. Yeah, and good enough where it has become the definitive version of Prime for me. Which doesn't mean I'm not going to play the original anymore. I'm going to play that. But I think Prime Master is going to be my first pick now. I think just out of purism, I might pick the GameCube over it. Maybe not. I mean, it's helping it's a lot. It's definitely that, like, uh, it's like, eh, you, you, yeah, I don't really know. Because here's the thing, though. The GameCube NTSC version has yeah. all those good scan logs that I really like that aren't canon. <laughs> okay, I can understand that, but from my perspective, that's not a factor because I always played the German version, and that's one the it's called it law corrected one. Yeah, so I I don't lose anything regarding narrative and playing the remastered version. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you don't lose out on anything. Maybe you lose out on the... Or no, you, you said there was an option for turning on and off the uh, the opening monologue, right? Yeah, and I basically circle through all options. Anytime I play it, I pick another one, because, I'm going to be honest with you, I find it hard to decide which one I like more. <laughs> I, I'm definitely anti-opening monologue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you stated your reasons, and I understand that. But I kind of dig them. I think they just didn't need framing defects because they are only at the opening and end. You know? Samus is under fire. No, they're not that bad. It's not like Smash Brothers bad. <laughs> oh, talking about Smash Brothers, I think who's going to be the next uh, Smash Brothers fighter for Metroid if we get another Metroid representative? It in would have Smash. to be either Ravenbeak or Silex, right? Oh, I didn't even think of Ravenbeak, you know? As much as Dread disappointed me, I wouldn't be mad at Ravenbeak appearing because he's such a logical pick, you know? The last surviving uh, show. Yep. So the most action guy. fightery of the action yeah. fightery characters in all of Metroid. <laughs> big boss battle, cool move set, so I think yeah. that would be fine. But obviously, as a big Prime fan, I would gravitate towards Silex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd be down for that. We'll see. I I'm also hoping not to see Ridley in Prime 4. Not gonna ruin the experience oh, if hell he's no. there. Oh, hell no. But I don't want him there. I don't need him there. It's it, you, you. What you need is to provide a justification for why he should be there. Yes. If they want to mention him, fine. Pirates keep uh, love keeping their lore and archives, so I wouldn't be surprised if he scanned a server and it was just a full data log entry on Ridley and how he's recovering or whatever yeah, the pirates yeah. are planning to do with his corpse or anything like that. If you wanted to maybe provide a bridge between Prime 3 and Metroid 2 where uh, or, Met or Super Metroid where you can... Um, let's just disregard Samus Returns for a second. You can show, like... <laughs> How did Rid Ridley disappearing in Prime 3 equate to him being back again in Super Metroid? Yeah. That lore stuff, that's the kind of fan service I like. And I'm not a big fan of fan service, but that is cool. I wouldn't mind reading a scan log about how, I don't know, the A4 system is becoming full again and the Luminov are recovering. It doesn't mean I, I kinda... need. Mm. I don't need the humors to appear in in a hand solo situation, like suddenly standing in front of Samus and be like, I got this, Sammy. That's not what I want. But, you know, reading through Federation logs and they're just reporting on what's going on in this galaxy and universe and there's some cross yeah. connection to other titles. That's the stuff I like when yeah. uh, executed properly. Um, I was going to say, imagine if they... They had, uh, you know, the previous Omega Ridley and the other Super Metroid Ridley being different members of the same species. And then and maybe in 
this intermediate entry, you have the life cycle making a return from Other M. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, I obviously don't like Other M, but I don't think it's a situation where we need to, you know, turn our backs on the game and be like, let's ignore it as hard as possible so well, it goes away. That was um, one of the good ideas I, I saw in Other M. I, I really liked the Ridley life cycle. Yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, if Ridley returned, if maybe we saw like a space pirate lab where they keep cloning Ridleys and you see them in different states of their life cycle. And most of them are terribly fucked up and barely able to breathe, connected to all sorts of wires and tubes. Because they can't, I would their like. cloning technology is so imperfect so that, yeah. And they don't care about casualties, you know? Right. What do you care about 20 Ridleys screaming I mean, they're gonna... in... They're gonna kill their own people, so like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm... I was kind of torn on the return of the pirates. On one hand, I was kind of like, I want as much new and original stuff in Prime 4 as possible. And then I was kind of like, but the pirates in Prime are fucking amazing and a large part of that game's identity. Well, so just... yeah. So it does take... So Federation Force takes place immediately after Prime 3, right? Yes. And then... Yes. This is going to have to take place after that. Um, I assume so, yeah. So the pirates aren't, I guess, fully eradicated until after Super Metroid, but, you know, those are that's like discovering a last remnant of them in Zebas once again. Yeah. Um, they basically resurrected in Zebas because Samus was so busy doing her prime era, sort out all of that shit, you know? So... It, it could be possible to just see more pirates. Um, I guess there's no... Like, even Federation Force didn't announce the end of the, the pirates that were stragglers off of uh, Prime 3, right? Yes. Uh, so, the Prime games have been very careful to leave such things a bit vague, so just... But just in case, if you need them to return, you can plausibly have them return. Yeah. Because there can it's be just a... remnants of pirates on multiple places. Yeah, it's not as crass as with the last Metroid is in captivity, and then that never made much sense when I, every I, civilization yeah. has Metroid DNA and perfect cloning uh, mechanisms. I do highly appreciate the commitment to not really having pirates be a thing past Super Metroid, though. Yes, that's one of the things... Uh, Red like that's right that's well. something I think is shows a lot of uh, integrity there. Yes, uh, they've been dealt with uh, by the time other M rolls around. Other M fusion and Dread get that aspect right. Yeah. Although you know, other M says like space pirates. I just are like animals. there's like yeah I I'm, I'm still confused about it. It's like th they start out as the unsuspecting like wildlife of a of a of a planet, and then I don't know yeah. through through Mother Breen plus Ridley equals mind control turns them into pirates. I guess I don't know. That was a really weird choice. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, about all we have on Prime 4 for now, right? I'm pretty yeah. certain we're going to return on it uh, during the next Direct. I actually only wanted to see one trailer for Prime 4 and then watch nothing else. I'm kind of at um, a point so where um, I still haven't played Tears of the Kingdom, by the way, for anyone wondering. <laughs> I'm kind of at a point where Prime Four, I'm I'm excited to see more of it, um, but then it's like, I don't know that I have much more interest in Nintendo related things after that. Yeah, I'm kind of drifting away from that. With me, it's kind of like that, uh, like this. Prime games happen so rarely that whenever one does happen, I wanna completely enjoy it. So I shouldn't be watching too much marketing material so I can go in fully blind. Yeah. But this first trailer was so so dense and 
tight and small that I feel like I can watch one more trailer and be fine, you know? So I'm not Cause really certain right now. Nothing's gonna ever replace that pure experience of just kind of getting a game used that you've never seen a trailer for. You yes. just know the name of the franchise. You're just like, you're bringing it home and then you're just, you know, it, you know, it's just another world's opening up and you you don't know you don't know what you're going to get. So that's kind of how I experienced all the Metroid games um before, you know, I really got onto the internet. And then yeah. after that, it's just kind of been like I don't like this new way that we're experiencing new games and stuff where everyone already knows everything about it before it even comes out. Like I'd rather yeah. I'd rather have that that black box experience, you know, just with the um with the idea that you know I'm gonna like what I get, but yeah, yes, yeah, that's why I'm saying like I want one decent trailer, and then I'm gonna be sold or I'm not gonna be interested, and then I play the game. But this trailer was so small that I kind of feel like I didn't get my trailer quite yet. You know, that was more like a teaser almost. Yeah, it was a teaser. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'm gonna watch the next trailer and we can talk about it. Maybe I'm going to skip it, just wait for the release date, which is, unless they, you know, delay it, which is at the most uh, one and a half years from now. Not that long. Well, no, they said 2025 was like the... Release date. Release, yeah. So oh, that so, would be... wait, didn't they say January? No, 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 we don't have a date. We just have the we don't. year. What was January? I don't remember. It could it could be January. Something, I feel like maybe there was something else that was January. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I feel like maybe they don't want to tell us the date because people are kind of suspicious that this is going to be a cross gen release Switch and Switch Two. So if they say the release date, then people might try to guess the release date of the Switch Two off of that. So they just say twenty twenty five. Maybe. So you're saying it um, could could be a launch title. I think it's going to be a launch title. I'm not even sure if we're going to get two versions of the game or if the Switch 2 is just going to be programmed or the game is going to be programmed to recognize which console it's running and it's just going to up the resolution and texture quality when it recognizes the Switch 2. Yeah, maybe. Because these, these graphics could be scalable. You know, you don't ac accident, uh, actually need to make two versions of the game. You just could make it like on yeah. PC with settings. Yeah, with with texture resolution settings. Yeah. Yeah. Only that you don't that get are to just automatically them. detected. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The console or the game chooses for you depending on what hardware you're playing. But still, it could be a big, a big opener. You know, like Switch Two drops. Nice. I like Switch One. I'm gonna get the two. What can I play on it? It'll be like oh, the Breath of the Wild impressive. of this of the Switch Two. Yeah. Also going to be interesting to see how this is going to sell because the last frame ga a game is so long ago. The gaming landscape with the Nintendo fan base is very different now. It's bigger. That alone could inflate sales numbers. But yeah, this game plus also the has... awareness again with with the internet, the awareness is so so ubiquitous now. Like, yeah, many people are already just impressed by the style. They're watching this, have no clue what they're seeing, and they're like, this is a Nintendo game? What the hell? What, wait, what do you mean four? There's been three others of these? What? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you know, that's it's a good thing. Yeah. For a total newcomer to be impressed by that and to be like, whoa, where did this come from? Interesting. Yeah. It's like uh, me with Fire Emblem. Except I'd never play it. Ever. <laughs> I might eventually I might eventually play some some kind of fire emblem. Okay. Maybe. But yeah. Uh I don't I don't know what to end off on other than just uh excited for what possibly could uh be revealed next, I guess. Yee, I'm gonna just say bye. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs> bye everyone.